Good afternoon and welcome to the World Series of Fighting 7 conference call. During the Q&A session, if you'd like to ask a question, please hit star 1 on your telephone keypad and I'll access your line at that time. If you'd like to withdraw your question, just hit the pound key. I will now turn you over to your host, John Bayrudi. Uh, thank you very much, operator. On behalf of World Series of Fighting, I'd like to thank you and welcome you to today's call. We have our seventh and final WSOF event this Saturday, December 7th. It's the first ever uh, World Series of Fighting fight card in Canada. It's going to take place at the PME Agrodome in Vancouver, British Columbia. Uh, there are 10 fights on the stacked card, uh, four of which will be televised by uh, NBC Sports Network, and at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, so it's live, and then preceding that will be undercard fight streaming live on the World Series of Fighting's official website, as you guys all know, www.wsof.com. That begins at 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 uh p.m. Pacific time. Obviously, World Series of Fighting is very, very excited about its first ever uh, event in Canada. This has been a, a great year for the World Series of Fighting. They've made uh, tremendous strides, and they're looking forward to a, a great event Saturday and in the future. Uh, with us on the call today... Uh, along with the president of WSOF, Ray Seppo, we have six of the eight fighters who will be participating on NBC Sports Network. They are uh, Georgie, Con Georgie Carconian uh, and Lance Palmer, who will be battling it out for the uh, first ever WSOF featherweight uh, championship. We've got uh, Elvis. Mutopchic and Jesse Taylor, who will be fighting in a middleweight tournament semifinal, and Nick Newell and Saba Fadai. So we've got six of the eight that are going to be fighting on the main televised card on NBC Sports Network. So before we go to the Q&A, we'll go to some uh, opening, comment, opening comments from all the participants, and we'll begin with the WSOF president, Ray Steffel. Ray, welcome to the call. Thank you, John. And, uh, of course, I, I, first of all, I want to thank all the media that's uh, on this call. You guys, the press, for which is a buddy, and, of course, uh, the fighters that will be participating uh, on Saturday night for WSOS 7. Um, I'm really excited about this uh, event um, for a few reasons. First being our first international event. You know, we've been saying that we're going to go globally, and that's this is the first. So uh, excited about that. Um, secondly, uh, it's our first featherweight title. It's going to be contested between Georgie Calicanian and Lance Palmer, which I think is going to be an amazing fight. It's going to be fireworks in that fight for sure. Uh, of course, uh, and thirdly, um, our fans in Canada gets to see which is a fighting first hand. And, um, and the other exciting news is also that TSN2 will be uh, also showing the fights on Sunday, December 8th at 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time, which is also in Canada. Um, a lot of, you know, a lot of good things uh, for 2014. Uh, I've said this in a few interviews that we are looking to go global. I was in London uh, to meet with uh, a few weeks ago with IMG. Uh, they had 60 agents there. Um, very excited to be partners with them. And, you know, we are looking to go to be in every household around the world uh, by the end of 2013. So exciting times, exciting uh, things happening for Wizards of Fighting. And again, I'm looking forward to the show and, you know, with the stack card and uh, all these guys. Jesse Taylor, uh, Albert Mitovic, um, Nick Neal, I mean, these guys are just uh, uh, stars of the sport. So looking forward to that. And, um, and good luck to the rest of the guys who will be fighting that night. Okay, great. Thanks, Ray. Okay, now we'll go to some opening comments 
from the fighters, and we'll start with the two participants uh, for the inaugural WSOF featherweight uh, championship. Uh, Jordy, would you go first, please? Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, very happy with the opportunity. Uh, well, since the fighting gave me, uh, you know, to fight for that 145-pound uh, championship belt. Uh, I'm very excited to go to Canada. I've never been there. And uh, just looking to go out there for an exciting fight for uh, Canadian fans and for World Series of Fighting. Okay, great. Thank you. Lance? Hey, what's going on? Um, really excited for the opportunity from World Series of Fighting. Um, everything happened so fast. It's, uh, it's exciting how the ball has been going this past month for me. I'm just excited to go out there. I have a lot of uh, a lot of friends in Canada who come and train with us at Team Alpha Male, and uh, a lot of fans out there of our team. So I'm excited to go out there and put on a show for everyone. Okay, thank you, Elvis. You're up. Uh, thanks, guys, for having me. I'm really excited to uh, finally fight for uh, World Series. Um, it's uh, it's been a it's been a long uh, long training camp for one fight. Uh, I'm ready to get in there, get over with, and uh, I'm really excited to be back up to Canada. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, Nick? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm excited to, you know, fight for World Series of Fighting again. Uh, first time fighting for them was incredible, and, uh, you know, they always put on good shows, and, and this is my first fight out of the country. I'm excited to uh, visit a new place, uh, meet new people, and, and put on another exciting fight for the fans. Great. Jesse? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just really, really focused on the fight. I'm really hungry. I'm ready to get in there and do my job. I'm really uh, happy to fight in Canada as well. Hey, thank you. Sabah? Thank you. Yeah, I'm really excited to fight in my backyard, Vancouver. It's going to be a great fight. I have a lot of fans and Family coming and supporting me. Um, it's going to be a great fight. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, all of you. Operator, will you give instructions again on how to ask a question? If anyone would like to ask a question, please hit star 1 on your telephone keypad, star 1, and I'll access your line. If you'd like to withdraw your question, hit the pound key. Okay, while we wait for our first question, uh, Lance, you mentioned... Uh, what a wild month it's been. Can you kind of uh, go through what kind of month it's been for you? Yeah, it's uh, it's been exciting. Everything happened pretty quick uh, with the signing with World Series fighting and also with the uh, the title fight. So it's uh, for me, I was in between contracts with another promotion, and uh, we had a good couple phone calls with everyone at World Series of Fighting and uh, – Things just progressed. First, I, I was signing with them, and then next thing you know, uh, Rick Glenn had to pull out of the fight, and uh, they gave me the opportunity to step in for him on four weeks' notice. So it's uh, it's been exciting, and it's it's been a lot of fun, uh, the process so far leading up to this point. Okay. Uh, Georgie, what do you know about uh, Lance, and what kind of fight do you expect uh this Saturday, um, I know that he's a, uh, you know, he comes from a good uh, wrestling background. Uh, he trains with a good team, uh, but you know, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, it's an MMA fight. So once that door locks, uh, it doesn't matter. It's not a wrestling match. You know, I'm looking to go out there and go for a finish. You know, it's a fight, and I like to fight. Uh, I don't mind getting punched in the face. And I don't mind punching him back. So, uh, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm just looking to go out there, put an exciting show for you guys and for the Canadian fans. And, uh, you know, I'm going for a finish. Okay. Uh, tell us everyone knows what happened uh, in your last fight and how the bout was canceled. Uh did you experience any negative fallout or were people understanding in the fact that, you know, none of this was your fault? 
Well, uh, I got I got you know ninety nine percent of the of the feedback was positive, you know. But uh, there was there was some people, you know, that were that were questioning if I did take something or you know what whatever happened. Which there's always going to be that, you know, it's always going to happen. Um, like I said, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really, I was really upset that it happened. Um, we get a, we get a chance to, uh, uh, make our living doing what we love, you know, and that night it got, it got taken away, you know, and if it wasn't for World Series being, uh, you know, such a great company, uh, me and Jesse would have been uh, out of a paycheck. So I just want to thank World Series for that. And, uh, I'm just real excited that we finally get to uh, get in there and uh, finish what we should have finished uh, three months ago. Okay. And uh, what kind of a fight are you expecting with Jesse? Uh, how, familiar, uh, how familiar are you with Jesse? I'm really familiar with Jesse. He's, uh, you know, he's, he's a he's a very aggressive guy. He's an extremely good wrestler. I mean, he's a well-rounded guy. Guys improve in every aspect, so you can't count you know, on anything that he hasn't improved. I got to expect every, the, the best fighter I ever faced out there, which I truly think he is. Um, I expect him to be very aggressive and come forward. And uh, I'm not expecting a dog fight until, uh, until the finish, you know, and uh, if there isn't a finish, I still expect, you know, I'm not expecting, I train for, you know, usually 25 minutes of a dog fight, you know, and this time I'm going to be able to pick up the pace a little bit. So I, I think there's going to be a lot of fireworks thrown by both of us. Okay, and Jesse, what's your take going into this fight and after the cancellation? Uh, I just want to get in there. I, w I want to fight, and um, I, I know it's going to be a good one. I think it's just going to be fun. I want to go out there and have fun. Mm hmm Okay. Uh, I know there's a lot of media on this call. If you want to ask a question, Please punch in so you can ask questions. Uh, while we continue to wait for our first question, I'll ask uh, Bob and Nick uh, what their feelings are going into their match. We'll start with the Bob. I'm sorry. Can you ask say a question? Hello? Yeah. Just what are your thoughts or feelings uh, fighting Nick, and what kind of fight do you expect? Um, well, Nick is a tough, uh, tough guy himself. You know, he's 10 and 0. Uh, a lot of time I, I've been asked, uh, how do you, how do you prepare for a guy with, with one arm and, and, uh, you know, you really don't, you don't, you don't, uh, you can't bring in somebody and, and tie off their arm and stuff like that. It just doesn't work that way. Um, you know, I, I think he's a tough guy. Uh, he uses that arm as an advantage. I'm not taking anything away from him. I'm going to go out there. And like I said before, um, I'm going to go out there to hurt him. You know, uh, that's our job to fight. And uh, that's what I'm going to do, especially coming to my town. And no, uh, it's just not going to happen. Man. Okay. And Nick, what are your uh, thoughts going into this fight, fighting on on his home turf? Uh, that doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter where I fight. You know, I'm, I'm it's just, it's another fight and, you know, I have a, a tough opponent and, you know, he's, he's, he's got, it sounds like he's got the right mindset. So, it, it, you know, whatever. It's just another fight and, and I'm going to uh, go out there and, and fight with everything I got and it should be pretty entertaining. Okay. We have a question in queue. Thank you. We have a question from Mike Whitman with Sheardog. Your line is live. Oh, thank you very much. Um, I'll open up with Ray, just a couple of um, kind of housekeeping questions. You're talking about international expansion, and we know you guys have been uh, pretty aggressive with that this year, especially towards the end of this year. Um, and I'm wondering what we can expect in 2014, specifically um, in Canada, opening up this international branch. Are we going to see multiple events in Canada next year, do you think? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, just like, uh, you know, we signed a deal with Australia and New Zealand, they're going to look to do six shows uh, in, Australia, in New Zealand, six shows in Australia. Uh, so 
in Canada will probably be about the same thing. Um, okay. Of course, not every show is going to be on the mothership, meaning the one you on NBC. Uh, probably out of those six shows, two of those shows will most likely be on NBC for sure. Okay, and those shows that aren't on the mothership, as you say, would those be streamed live, do you think? Uh, yes, uh, I believe so. And um, there's also, you know, um, things in the works in terms of uh, probably having a local um, network that will actually uh, show those fights as well. Okay. Local, um, yeah. And then also abroad, uh, you guys recently announced a, a partnership with Japanese organization Pancrase, which has, you know, been in this business for 20 years. Um, and yeah. I'm wondering, is there any is there any progress on that? I know there was hinted uh, at Yushin Okami maybe being on the card, and or do you guys have a date for when that uh, first Japanese event uh, might take place? Right now, there's no definite date, uh, but we are looking at the end of March, probably uh, early April. Okay, um, and then I'll uh, thank you, Ray. I'll move on to Georgie. Um, we've seen you compete several years now uh, with great success um, in Bellator, and then more recently um, in Tachi Pal fights and other organizations. It seems to me, uh, and then of course, you know, your World Series of Fighting debut, which was excellent against Waylon Lowe. It seems to me that you're really hitting your peak. You're hitting your stride. Uh, the age that you're at is the age we typically associate with with athletes hitting their prime. Is that how you're feeling right now? And, and what do you think is um, the catalyst for you having so much momentum right now? Uh, I think I just uh, learn uh, how how to win fights and how to uh, how to uh, break my opponent, you know, uh, in a fight. Cause before I used to go in a fight and. Uh, look for a finish right away. And if I wouldn't get it, I'll, I'll get discouraged. And, you know, I lost some fa- uh, fights in the past. I learned from it. And, and uh, you know, I'm just, just being in the gym every day. You know, I, I never take any days off. And the only times I take some time off is when I overtrain or if I get sick. But other than that, I'm in the gym every day, uh, trying to learn, trying to work on my weaknesses. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, I think that's it. And, you know, the, the main factor is just learn how to perform under bright lights, you know, when those, when those door locks and the cameras and everything and all the people just learn how to fight and perform. And, you know, and I, like I said, I like to fight and, uh, you know, that's the main thing. Okay. Um, and then I have one for Lance and then I'll get off here and, and clear up the line for, for somebody else. But Lance, um, Georgie is only lost to a handful of people in his career, and they've uh, been excellent. His Bellator career uh, was Patricio Pitbull and Joe Warren. The Warren loss is interesting to me, and that was a while ago, obviously, and Georgie has improved. But Warren is another clearly a standout wrestler, uh, Greco-Roman world champion. You yourself, four-time All-American. Um, I'm wondering if, if you're aware of that fight, if you think that your wrestling is really going to be the key here as far as stifling uh, his explosiveness standing up and, and being able to wear him out on the ground. Uh, yeah, I think everybody, uh, I mean, everyone knows this, that you, everyone improves after, you know, their past fights. And uh, that's just the evolution of the sport. And so I know he's going to be better than he was in his last fight against uh, Waylon Lowe. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be better than I was in June. And so those past fights, you know, they're good to watch for tape and stuff like that. But you're always, you always have to expect an improved fighter. So uh, I've improved everywhere. And, uh, you know, I'm just looking forward to going out there and and putting on a good fight. Because I know Georgie's a tough dude and I'm a tough dude as well. So it's going to be exciting. Okay. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thanks, Mike. Our next question comes from Sean Alshadi from MMA Fighting. Hey, guys. I appreciate the time. Uh, my first question is for Nick. Uh, you, you've talked pretty openly about, you know, your ultimate goals and, and what it's going to take to get there. So, I mean, that being said, I guess my question is, was there any frustration on your end when you found out about Jay-Z's dropout, especially now that, you know, he's getting a title shot? Wait, wait, what? One more time? Um, yeah, you, you've talked pretty openly about how your ultimate goals and what it's going to take to get there. 
I mean, that being said, was there any frustration on your end when you found out about Jay Z's dropout, and then you know now that he's getting a title shot? Oh, I didn't know he was getting a title shot, and I don't think I don't think we were ever matched up. Um, so you know, uh, I don't know where he, it came that he dropped out, but um, you know, eventually that's someone that I'd I'd like to fight. Um, you know, he's a he's a very good fighter, and you know, anything he gets, he deserves. But um, obviously, I think I'm the best, and and I'm not really worried about him right now. I'm more worried about you know uh, Fadai and, and the thing, the threats that he poses to me, and uh, you know, I'm I'm just really I'm just concentrated on this fight more than anything else. Um, when it comes to the title and stuff like that, you know, you have to be able to beat everyone if you if you think you're the best. So uh, you know, in due time, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get there and and fight whoever I have to fight and. And, uh, you know, there are no easy fights and world series of fighting. So, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just very happy to be able to fight and perform on such a big stage and, and test myself every fight. Yeah. Well, obviously, you know, things were difficult for you when you first started back in 2009. Do you feel like you still encounter that stigma pretty regularly now that it's four years later or, or is it less so? Uh, I feel like I'm beginning to be known more, you know, for my skill than I am for having one hand. But, you know, uh, people are always going to say, look at that guy. I can't believe it. You know, like the first new fans. So it's a part, it's a part of who I am. You know, if I go to the movies, I'm like, look at that guy going to see a movie. He's only got one hand. So it's always going to be like that. And there's always going to be people that, have negative things to say or, or whatever, but I, I never really paid attention to it. You know, growing up, I learned to have uh, thick skin and, and uh, I'm a fighter at the end of the day and I'm, I'm a good one. So that's why I'm in the world series of fighting. I'm, I'm here because of what I accomplished and not because of the way I was born. Yeah. Well, does, does this challenge excite you then? Because you, you've talked pretty often about how you want to always fight just ex UFC guys now to, to kind of prove yourself. Uh, you know, that was something I said that was taken a little out of context. I just wanted tough fights. Um, you know, and World Series of Fighting has, has very tough fighters. Um, and I just, I just wanted to improve my level of competition. You know, the last week I was in, uh, you know, I got a lot out of them and they were, they got a lot of me and it was, a very, it was a, good partnership, but it was time to move on. The guys fighting for the title, they're either inexperienced or have 500 records. You know, I wanted to fight tough guys and, and World Series of Fighting has been doing a great job to uh, provide those to me. And and I'm just continually getting to test myself and I'm very happy. Well, you got yourself a real tough fight, son. Well, then my next question is for uh, Sabat. What was your reaction when you got that phone call? I mean, obviously, Nick, presents a big opportunity to really get your name out there. Yeah, thanks, Mitch. Now everybody won't stop talking to me. Um, <laughs> it was uh, it was a good opportunity. It's great. Uh, you know, what, what, what else can you say? The guy's ten and zero. He's done great things. Yeah. And uh, you know, signing with World Series, it's uh, it, it's a great accomplishment for for both of us. You know. Um, he asked for a tough fight. Well, he got one. So December 7th, let's put on a show, son. We talked about I talked about it a little bit earlier, but the challenge Nick brings is, is, is really unique. So what have you done, I mean, both physically, but also mentally to, to prepare for that? You know, at the end of the day, like it, it's always the same. It's going to be the same preparation for every fight, really. Just tweaks here and there in the game plan and whatnot. Um, Mentally, the game is always the same. You got to be going out there, prepared to fight, to battle. You got to stay focused for, you know, for how many ever uh, minutes it takes to finish the fight. And that's what I'm planning on doing. I'm going out there to finish the fight. I don't care for judges or whatnot. And if it goes to a decision and, you know, they give it to me and it's going to be controversial and all this crap, you know, because it's in my hometown, I don't want that. So I'm I'm going to go out there and, and I'm going to finish this fight. All right. Well, then last thing for me, I'll clear up the line. Uh, for Ray, 
what are, what are the stakes for this fight coming in? I mean, for the winner, is the next tire shot on the line? Uh, which fight? Uh, Safar uh, and, and Nick? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. Uh, I haven't thought about that yet. Um, you know, um, one step at a time. So I'm sure these guys, uh, I mean, that's a possibility, but um, I'm going to sit down with the team and, and discuss that. Uh, so I, I can give you a different answer on that. All right. Well, I appreciate the time, man. Thank you. If anyone would like to ask a question, please hit star one on your telephone keypad, star one, and I'll access your line. We do have a question from Eric Fontanez with MMAweekly.com. Your line is live. All right, thank you. Um, to Nick, um, Nick, of the 10 wins you have, seven have come by submission. Can you tell me what you feel is the secret to your success with your grappling game in MMA? I just work hard and I, I train a lot and I'm very good at capitalizing on openings and I have a lot of early finishes because I've been able to capitalize on people's first mistakes. Um, I have a pretty pretty good instincts and when I go out there I don't come to you know play around and play patty cake and, and look at the other guy and be like, Oh, cool. We're fighting. You know, like I come to, to fight the whole time and I'm aggressive. And I think that's what, uh, you know, helps me be very good in the submission aspect of the sport. And do you think in those fights, uh, and you mentioned, you know, you capitalize on early mistakes. Do you think guys come into a fight with you, not really giving you the credit for your grappling skill? And uh, that's kind of where they mess up, and you take advantage. I don't know. You'd ha you'd have to, you know, you'd have to be able. You'd have to ask them. I've won uh, a lot of jujitsu tournaments. I, I I tap out uh, a lot of good black belts, and um, you know, I, I mean, I think I have a pretty legit ground game. Whether someone wants to underestimate me or sleep on it or whatever, that's on them. It, you can think whatever you you want to think that. But at the end of the day, I'm as good as I am, and I have what I have. So, you know, that's it, it. Doesn't you could say whatever, think whatever, but what's going to happen is is what happens. And you know, you say that people could think whatever they want and all that, but do you honestly believe that at this point in your career, being undefeated, that people still aren't giving you the credit that you deserve? Uh. You know, I don't really care. I'm not like, hey, give me more credit. You know, I I don't really care about that stuff. I just enjoy fighting, and I enjoy the competition, and I enjoy stuff like that. And if you want to give me credit, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. Either way, I'm, I'm cool just having fun and doing something that I love. All right, thanks for that. And one more question for Ray. If you could, it's a little bit off topic, but I wanted to know if you guys have a, have an opponent lined up for Rusamar Pajars yet. Do you have a, uh, a venue and a date or anything as far as that's concerned? Uh, no, not at this present time. Um, uh, we, I mean, there's discussions. Uh, most likely, he may uh, fight in March, but there's nothing concrete, um, and we are looking for to match him up with somebody. A few names floating around right now, so I'm not in concrete yet. Okay, and and one more thing about that: a lot of the backlash after he was released from the UFC is that he really didn't deserve to fight. You know, a lot of people had that opinion. What was the selling point for you guys to pick up on Paul Harris? Uh, I was one of the first people that also said the same thing uh, that I wasn't interested um, because again, this is a sport, and I want to see you know I don't want to see anybody get hurt badly or get paralyzed in there because of some, you know, silliness. So um, when I heard an interview that Dana did, and then when I did a little bit of research that he had been um, uh, suspended by the commission a few times. Uh, so those were, you know, uh, legitimate reasons why I didn't, uh, you know, want to sign him. But after uh, listening to Henry Gracie, who's a master of jiu-jitsu, and what he had to say about that particular uh, incident, 
And then uh, there's been discussions and dialogue going back and forth between uh, Matchmaker and his team and, and Noguera. And Noguera is giving us his word that he's actually, you know, sitting down with him and is helping with his camp and uh, they're looking to uh, get him some help as well. Um, so, you know, all these things put together um, uh, allow me to uh, look at it from a different perspective and, and, um, and talk to the team about it. And so, you know, we decided that we were going to sign him. That being said, uh, I will not tolerate any of that uh, nonsense uh, that happened before. If that happens again, he's gone, and I think it would be silly for him to happen for it to happen. For it to happen again, because I'm pretty sure if he goes from here, he won't head somewhere else, anywhere else to go. You know what I mean? So, um, but again, Noguera and, 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 and the team there were um, uh, giving us his word, and then that things will be will be good from here on in. So, uh, you know, we'll wait and see. Is that an understanding from from Paul Harris's side that if? You know, he pulls anything like he did in his last fight that he's gone. Do they understand that fact? Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. Okay. Great. Thanks for the answers, guys. Thank you. Our next question comes from Kenny, I mean, from George Kenny Brew with MMA Mayhem Radio. Good afternoon, Good afternoon, Good afternoon gentlemen. Uh, this first question is for both Georgie and Lance. Um, guys, I mean, I know in, in MMA, you know, you, they say, you know, you can't get caught up in the hype and the excitement and the spectacle of, you know, what's about to happen. But, I mean, you know, you guys have been literally busting your butts for a long time, and now the uh, uh, now the World Series of Fighting has offered you this opportunity to compete for the first ever featherweight title and make history. Um, is there any deep anxiety, you know, leading up to the fight where you just think, like, man, I got a chance to make history here and really make a name for myself as the first ever World Series of Fighting Featherweight Champion. No, not on uh, not on my end. I think it's just uh, it's another opportunity to uh, to go out there and show my skills and and have fun doing it. I mean, I've competed my whole life at a high level. And uh, kind of always been in the, you know, on the big stage at, you know, whatever level of my career, uh, whether it's wrestling or MMA. So, uh, and the teammates I train with are, you know, they're guys that have been there also. So it's not something that I really have anxiety about, but it's definitely an uh, exciting opportunity. And um, I'm sure we're both going to take full advantage of it on uh, Saturday night. Yeah. You know what? Uh, I don't think hypes and all that bullshit. You know, you can't you can't believe in that because the day you do, that's the day you're gonna lose. So, uh, but uh, you know, fighting for a belt is it's a great opportunity uh, for me. Uh, I said this before. You know, I'm very grateful that uh, World Series of Fighting gave me the opportunity to fight for a belt. And uh, you know, I'm just I just can't wait. I'm just anxious to eat some food, man. And then <laughs> fight the next day, so that's why. <laughs> but uh, that's what I care about man, how is some food? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just anxious to eat some food and then uh, fight the next day. That's the best feeling. So yeah. Very good, very good. And uh, another question for for Guy. Um, in, in spite of you know all this stuff that's you know um, being said about Nick Newell. And the, and the attention, I guess, the mixed attention that's uh, been coming on him. Um, do you kind of, like, look past all that? And do you just kind of just prepare yourself and just distance yourself and just think about the opportunity that you have, you know, to, to really uh, make a name for yourself, as, as the gentleman before me uh, said before, and go out there and get yourself probably what would be the biggest win of your career? That's all I can focus on. That's all I can focus on. I, I can't focus on his success. I can't focus on, uh, you know, um, you know what he's done going off for himself. I got to focus on my training. I got to focus on, uh, you know, what I have to go through to beat this guy. And, man, your question was so damn long, and I'm so hungry I couldn't even pay attention to all of it. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, I, just, I don't know what I'm going to say here, but I, I just, I just want to fight, man. I just want to eat and fight. That's all I want to do right now. And, uh, yeah, December 7th is going to be a great fight, man. That's all I can say. I just all right. Want to... All right, well, thanks a lot, gentlemen, and I uh, appreciate the time. For sure, man. Eat some food for us. Man, I'm we, hungry. We do have a question from Brent Hall with ProFightingFans.com. Your line is live. Hey, thanks, guys. I just have a couple of questions for Lance. Um, this is obviously a huge fight for you. You train with an amazing group of fighters at Team Alpha Male. With the continued success of that group, does it put extra pressure on you heading into Saturday night? No, not at all. The you know the extra extra pressure is something that you put on yourself. It's just something that's all mental. Um, I'm just excited to go out there and compete because uh, that's why we're in the sport to compete, and we do what we love. And uh, you know, there's no extra pressure based on what my teammates have accomplished because uh, we're all, we're all our own fighters, and uh, so I'm my own fighter. So. Uh, we all have our own our own things that we're good at and things that we like to do. And even though we're on the same team and my teammates in the UFC have had success so far uh, this year, it's, uh, you know, I'm just excited to go out there and, and have fun and, and be able to compete. And was it easier to train for this particular fight because so many of the guys in your camp are also training for big fights? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, that's been a thing in the past. Sometimes guys haven't, haven't had fights around the same time, but uh, my teammate Chris Holdsworth fought last week. Uh, I'm fighting this week, and then we got four guys on the Sacramento card next weekend. So, uh, you know, we had a whole team in there, uh, so it was a strong camp, and, and everybody's, uh, everybody's pumped up, and it was on a different level with our training. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Good luck to everyone on Saturday night. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, we just have enough time to go through, uh, get some closing comments from the fighters and Ray. Uh, once again, this Saturday, December 7th, World Series fighting really awaited Canada. Uh, What's the background noise, fellas? Thank you. Uh, once again, this Saturday, WSOF's uh, first venture into Canada. Uh, World Series of Fighting 7. The PNE Agrodome in, in, in Vancouver, British Columbia. Uh, the televised card, four bouts on NBC Sports Network, begins at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, all live. And then six more fights, the terrific card, uh, will be streamed on uh, WSOF.com beginning at 6.30 Eastern and 3.30 Pacific. Uh, tickets, as usual, are reasonably priced. We hope to see you there. But if you can't be there, we want you to definitely uh, tune in uh, on NBC Network. Sports Network, and WSOF uh, official website. This one, we're going to go to closing comments. Uh, to the media, thank you for your continued uh, support. Uh, fighters, good luck to you all. Uh, we'll start closing comments with Georgie. Yeah, um, again, thanks to uh, uh, World Series of Fighting, thanks to Ray Sefo, for giving me this great opportunity to uh, fight this Saturday for the belt. And, uh, you know, I can't wait to finish this year with, uh, with the victory and, uh, you know, put an exciting fight for the Canadian fans. Thank you. Uh, fantastic. Best of luck to you. Uh, Lance? Yeah, I want to thank everybody. Uh, thanks, Ray and World Series for the opportunity uh, for this fight. And, uh, I'm excited just to put on a good show for uh, the fans in Vancouver and, you know, everyone watching on TV as well. I'm going to go out there and uh, take it to them and get the win to bring back the sack. 
All right, great. Uh, good luck to you. Uh, Elvis had to drop off the call, so we're going to move on to uh, Jesse for your closing comments. Jesse? Uh, I'm ready. Me and me and Elvis are going to put on a really good show, and um, I'm really happy to fight for WSOF, uh, fight in Canada. Thank you, Ray Suffo, for everything you've done. And, uh, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm hungry. I'm ready. Okay, thanks. Uh, Nick, can we get some closing comments from you, please? Yeah, I've I've never been more hungry or motivated, and I really know that I have a great opportunity in front of me, and I'm willing to make the most of it and expect a, a great showing from me on Saturday night and uh, another entertaining fight. Okay, and last but certainly not least, can we get your closing comments, Tom? Yeah, December 7th, uh, live on NBC in my backyard, Vancouver, BC. World Series of Fighting 7, fighting Nick Newell. Nick, you're going to get hit. It's going to hurt. I'm going to touch your heart. So come out swinging. Um, I will, bro. I will. Trust me on that. Bring your A game, man. That's all I want. That's all I want. That's all I ask for. I want a good fight. All right, great. Uh, thank you. Uh, Ray, we can wrap this call up, but we want to get uh, your closing comments. Uh, yes, just before I thank everybody, I uh, just want to say uh, hi to Shabbat. The guy, because I don't think I mentioned him when in, in I first uh, I was reading up the names. Sorry about that, brother. Uh, but um, I want to thank the, the, the media for being here and the fans for the uh, from from day one, that we've gotten love and support from both the fans and the media. So um, it'll be an exciting night, uh, another world title fight. Uh, look forward to going to Canada, Vancouver again. And uh, again, if, uh, tune in on NBC Sports Network. Otherwise, watch it on uh, WSOF.com or TSN uh, Sunday. Uh, again, thank you, everybody, and um, have a great day. Okay. Uh, that's going to wrap up the call. Thanks to Debbie and Maggie for helping uh, make this call run so smoothly from the conference group and to all the media. Once again, thanks for your continued support. This has been a, been a great year for the WSOF, and Saturday is going to be a fitting conclusion to what's been a terrific year. There's more to come. And, again, thanks for your participation today. Everyone have a great day. And good luck again to all the fighters. Thank you.